When Apple first revealed the M1 MacBook Air a little over a year ago, we had no idea how much it would impact the laptop space. With the impressive combination of build quality, performance, battery life, reliability, and of course value, this MacBook has single-handedly flipped the script in terms of the general perception of Apple MacBooks compared to Windows laptops, with the MacBook Air now being a better value than many other Windows machines. But now Apple's M1 Air is finally under attack, and this time it's from the inside. Not only do we have the new 14 and 16 inch Apple Silicon MacBook Pros that are very tempting, but we're also starting to get a flood of rumors for the next generation M2 MacBook Air redesign. So what I'm gonna do in this review is take a look at the M1 MacBook Air from a future 2022 perspective with my thoughts on how it holds up compared to the current M1 Pro MacBooks, as well as its eventual M2 chip replacement. So let's jump right into it. With the M1 Air now selling for only $900 on Amazon, there's no question that it's still a killer value and an excellent choice for students or anyone needing a reliable laptop. When we compared it to other Windows laptops in its price range, the MacBook Air always had better build quality, a much better trackpad, superior speakers, higher display quality, especially in terms of reflectivity, much better battery life, and almost always better performance in various different aspects. For example, it comes with the major benefit of having very high single core performance, which gives you incredibly impressive web browsing performance compared to other laptops. But on the other hand, it also has enough performance to fly through many of the common productivity tasks like music production in Logic Pro, programming in Xcode, and video editing in whatever app you choose. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's completely fanless, which means zero fan noise and no worries about dust clogging up the heat sinks. And let me once again mention that no other Windows laptop can match up in terms of battery life. So for $900 on Amazon, the M1 Air is still an absolutely incredible value even after a full year, especially if you factor in the excellent resale value. And I would fully recommend this MacBook Air over any other Windows laptop in its price range. But now let's move on to the next contender, Apple's most recent 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. While we absolutely love these new MacBook Pros and we think they're game changers in terms of the high end laptop market, the reality is that they start at $2,000, over two times the price of the M1 Air, since you still can't get any discounts on them from Amazon. And the truth is that a lot of the extra features and benefits of those MacBook Pros don't really matter that much for the common person or student. For example, the new mini LED display is hands down the best display we've ever seen in a laptop, but if you're a common user, you're probably not gonna care too much about the 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate feature. And the new mini LED tech only really makes a huge difference when editing or viewing HDR content. So if you never watch HDR movies on your laptop, you might not even get to experience the crazy thousand nit brightness anyway, since for regular use, that display goes down to a standard 500 nits, which isn't much brighter than 400 on the air. And because of the way the new mini LED tech works, I personally have noticed blooming or glowing issues while watching movies like Dune. So the point that I'm trying to make is that the display on the air is still really good since it supports true tone and P3 color accuracy. And as far as the everyday use components like the trackpad and keyboard, they're basically the same and they both have Touch ID. But the downside with the new MacBook Pros is that they're noticeably larger and heavier, which sucks for those people who really prioritize portability. And because of the wedge-shaped design of the Air, it's actually noticeably thinner as well. And then when we get into performance, while the new M1 Pro models were quite a bit faster, the M1 Air held up impressively well considering the price point and the fact that it outperforms the old 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro in many different ways. So when we're talking about the common person who isn't gonna be doing productivity tasks all the time, waiting an extra minute to export 50 raw photos in Lightroom isn't gonna be a deal breaker, especially since they're only paying $900 
instead of 2000. And the impressive part is that the MacBook Air is rated for even better battery life than the new MacBook Pros with 15 hours of web browsing compared to just 11 on the 14 inch and it gets an extra hour of movie playback. Now, of course, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro has many other benefits like the better 1080p webcam, much better speakers, thinner bezels on the display, and of course, all of the extra ports including MagSafe, but paying an extra $1,100 for those features is a tough pill to swallow. So in my honest opinion, if you can't take advantage of those extra features and the extra performance on a daily or at least a weekly basis, then spending the extra cash simply is not going to be worth it, making the M1 MacBook Air the best choice for you even though it's a full year old already. And this finally brings us to the last contender, the upcoming redesigned M2 MacBook Air. Now I've been seeing some comments from people hoping that the new MacBook Air is gonna come as soon as the spring of next year, but that's simply not true. First of all, the latest rumor from Ross Young, who has a 100% track record, shows that the new 27 inch iMac is gonna be coming at Apple's spring event. So there's no way that Apple will introduce the M2 chip alongside that new redesigned iMac. So the next possible event after that for the M2 MacBook Air reveal would be Apple's WWDC in June, but it also looks like that's not happening for a couple of different reasons. First off, Ming-Chi Kuo has already reported that the redesigned MacBook Air is only going to start mass production in the third quarter of 2022, which only begins in July, which would mean that a WWDC reveal is not likely. And since Apple usually never reveals new Mac products at their September event, we probably shouldn't expect the new M2 MacBook Air until October or November. So the point that I'm trying to make is that if you choose to wait for the new redesigned M2 models, you could be waiting almost a full year. And if you think you're going to be able to get the new M2 model for the same $999 MSRP, you're probably wrong as well. When Mark Gurman first told us about the redesigned MacBook Air earlier this year, he mentioned that the new one is going to be a higher end version of the current M1 MacBook Air, which is expected to remain in the company's lineup as an entry level offering. Yes, that's right. When Apple releases the new M2 model, the M1 MacBook Air is still going to be in the lineup. Kind of like how the super old Series 3 Apple Watch is still in the lineup to this day. And this actually isn't the first time that Apple did this to the MacBook Air. For example, in 2018, Apple released the newly redesigned Intel MacBook Air with the updated body language and retina display for a starting price of $1199 but they actually kept the old silver bezeled MacBook Air around for another year at the entry level $999 price. And based on Mark Gurman's report, I think Apple is going to do exactly the same thing this time around, keeping the M1 Air at the same $1000 starting price while introducing the new M2 model for $1199. And this is actually a deal breaker for people who don't want to spend more than $1000 on a laptop. So waiting for an even more expensive $1,200 M2 Air would be a mistake compared to buying the M1 Air on Amazon right now for $900. And you can find the link to that deal down in the description or pinned comment below. But let's say you are willing to wait almost a full year and you're willing to spend an extra $300. What exactly are you going to get with the new M2 Air? Well, first of all, it's going to take on the new flat top and bottom design language from the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, except that the body is going to be quite a bit thinner and and lighter. And the awesome thing about that is that they can easily fit in the same battery in a thinner laptop because the current tapered design makes it complicated to fit in larger batteries. But now, with the new flat and boxy shape, there is a lot more internal volume for batteries, so we could see even better battery life in the new M2 Air. 
Going further, it's gonna come with MagSafe charging, which I really, really like, and while it's still expected to get only two USB-C ports, one of them will likely be on the right side of the MacBook, which is gonna be very convenient. And it's also gonna get a wide variety of color options, like we have on the current 24-inch iMac, and it'll most likely get off-white display bezels and a matching keyboard, which some people find repulsive for some reason, but I personally really like it. The display is also gonna get the new mini LED display tech, but it won't be getting the new 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate feature. And while I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna be getting a notch or not, the latest rumors point to it getting a new 1080p webcam. But other than that, not much is gonna be different except for, of course, the new M2 chip. In a recent video, I estimated the performance of the M2 and I ended up with some pretty impressive performance results with a decent boost coming to both the single core performance and the multi-core performance, which is gonna help for productivity tasks, but likely is not gonna make that big of a difference for common stuff like web browsing. And the reason there won't be a massive jump in CPU performance is that the M2 chip will continue to have the same exact CPU layout with four high-performance cores and four efficiency cores. Now on the other hand, the graphics performance is gonna get a huge improvement since we're expecting the M2 to get an extra two GPU cores, so we could see metal scores close to around 30,000, which is very impressive. So based on all of that, if you can stretch your budget all the way up to around $1,200, then the new M2 Air is gonna be totally worth spending the extra cash. But if you're limited to under $1,000 and you don't really wanna wait potentially up to a full year, then the current M1 MacBook Air is still, hands down, the best laptop you can buy right now beating all the Windows competition while still holding up impressively well compared to the new M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So hopefully you enjoyed our one year review of the M1 Air, and if you did, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one, and definitely check out our new MacBook Pro reviews right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.